Aloha. It's Friday. It's time for Trump Week. I'm Tim Apicella, filling in for Jay Fidel, and I'm here with Cynthia. Cynthia Lee Sinclair. I always get that a little up on that one. Good morning, Cynthia. How are you? Good morning, Tim. It's nice to be here. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have quite the topic today, and that is the declaration of a national emergency from President Trump. Uh, bottom line is um, he's declared a national emergency, and that is going to have very large impacts both on the House and the Senate. And, of course, um, there are other states involved with this that uh, we're going to discuss in a little bit. But let's just go right to the national emergency. So he... The bill was passed giving the, um, the wall a concession right. from the Democrats, right. passed in the House, then the Senate, of $1.3 billion for not necessarily a, a concrete wall, but for border security right. and border, border defenses, if you will. And very small portion of that was dedicated to some sort of barrier. The rest of it was all um, electronic stuff, surveillance. Uh, staff, more people, things like that, right? So when Trump stands up and says today, I, I was watching him in the Rose Garden this morning, right. and he's, he's saying that, um, you know, they kept saying they weren't going to give me even $1, not $1, and I got 1 1.3 or 1 1.4, 1.3 yeah. 1 billion. And it's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> so he's trying to spin it that that one point three billion was for his wall, when really it's not. You, you know, I, I saw that that comment in the Rose Garden, and I, I kept thinking back to when you negotiate a deal when you were back in grade school or you're back in junior high. And it was always that person that said, "Uh huh, I got something off you that you weren't going to give me," right. and it just reminded me of um, a sour grape type of negotiation. Right. Um, and it's just. You just don't expect it from a president of the United States. Well, you would hope it wouldn't be coming from a president of the United States. You would hope for more decorum and more control and, and more civility, for goodness sakes. But, but we just don't get that from, right. from this president. You know, and as he's talking about where he's going to get this money, which he won't exactly tell us, that because now he's you know, declared the state of emergency, which means he can go and get the money from all number of places. And he's saying that the generals think that this is more important because someone was asking, one of the um, reporters was asking him about, you know, where is this money going to come from now that you've declared this emergency? What are you going to do? And he's, and he's saying that the generals think that this is way more important. Well, just a little bit after that on MSNBC, they had General McCaffrey on, McCaffrey. And he says, it is two to five years in negotiations to get the funding that they get. They're not going to want to give it up not without... Easily. Not easily. Okay, not easily. He said they, there's no generals. He cannot imagine that there'd be any generals that actually feel that way. Well, I like to take a little walk back because what this stems from is the criticism that President Obama received when he... Remember when he would introduce, you know, their bill would be introduced and, of course, the Republicans back in the day wouldn't entertain it at all. So that right. kind of forced President Obama to do executive orders. Right. And executive orders was being criticized as trying to skirt the right. Congress right. as far as their role to fund uh, projects right. and activities. And so we had a tweet from Donald Trump back in November 20th, 2014, addressing his, his criticism of President Obama about trying to skirt Congress. And I'd like to share that quote. Okay. <laughs> it says, Republicans must not allow President Obama to subvert the, the Constitution of the United States for his own benefit and because he's unable to negotiate with Congress. Now, doesn't wow. that sound like his national emergency is exactly that which he tweeted about November 20th, 2014? Well, so often he does that kind of stuff, right? Where he um, criticizes past presidents and then does the very same thing that he was criticizing them about. And then I was struck by the fact that he's saying, well, past presidents, all these past presidents have declared national emergencies. Well, they looked it up and they were talking about it. There's the main big, there's only three of them. And these were the reasons that it was um, declared. And it was President Roosevelt, and that was to confine the U.S. citizens to the Japanese war camps and um, in World War II. 
And then um, President Bush, and that was to justify the warrantless um, wiretaps and right. things, right? Um, after 9-11. And then President Obama, and it was his response to the swine flu. These are all things that happened in an immediate emergency type of a situation. This can't claim emergency. He's been sitting on this, working on this for two years. It's not an emergency well, anymore. He certainly has been advised by his attorneys. Now let's go back to the 1970, 1976 Act, um, the National Emergency Act, okay. uh, September 14th, 1976, which is, you know, there's still existing national emergencies on the book. Some are very small. Some of them involve Iran. Right. Um, very small, but they have to be renewed, I believe, every year by Congress as continuation of a national emergency. Now, what I find is interesting is that Congress renews it, like I said, once a year, but they also can pass a simple resolution terminating the act. What? Yes. And it hasn't been done? Well, th that's what's in this law. <laughs> I'm like, but, why but, doesn't anybody you know that's that, their job? <laughs> that's the point is that, you know, I think Congress, if they really do object to the use or the misuse of a national emergency for something that he just can't get funding for, which is the role and job of the Congress, right. both, well, mostly the House of Representatives, of course, um, right. they do have the right to say, we do not agree with this. And they could, you know, they could pass. Um, right. A resolution and send it to the president's desk, and of course the you know, he's not going to sign it. Well, <laughs> but, okay, but what's that called? It's basically right, an veto. unsigned veto, right? Right. Does that give them the right then to override a veto? Don't they have to have enough votes to be able to override? Yeah, and it? I think there might be enough Republicans in the, the Senate House you might and the right. House that says, "Look, we we don't want this national emergency to be put forth because why?" Well, mainly because when the next president comes exactly. in, they've set a precedent and he can do whatever he wants Well, to. And, and, and what do you think is going to come to the table? I think it's going to be gun control because that's right. a national emergency. And, and that want, is a national if, emergency. If you want to start putting it into this context <laughs> um, right. of, you know, thousands of kids being shot up or people being shot up, it's a national emergency. Right. So what would prevents any Democrat president in the future to put that on the table as a national emergency right. to get funding for it to do something about right. it or whatever they want well call. then let's go down the line what else um gee our medicare is becoming into a financial crisis right. doesn't that constitute a national emergency for people who are not without health care and they're you know the funding levels are low right. um what else certainly climate change could certainly be i would think climate change would be number one but right it's going to be number one let's start removing um or reducing our use of fossil fuels, get more electric cars, you know, more renewable energy. But President Trump doesn't want to do any of that stuff, right? So you can understand why there are enough savvy Republicans in Congress to, to say, President Trump is not going to be a president forever, and we right. may not have a Republican president the next term, after, right. you know, in 2020, and right. what are we going to set ourselves up for? Yeah. So, why would it behoove them? To or let why them would do they it. not want to say this? Right. This is a use of national emergency that we don't like and we don't endorse. Could happen. Right. We don't know. Time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. What I, from what I understood about the National Emergency Act is that you had to be um, Congress like couldn't be. Uh, what is it? Uh, isn't available. That's what I was looking for. That Congress isn't available. And that's the only reason they can do that. I thought that was well, part purpose, of the thing. The purpose there. of the National Emergency Act was to end open-ended declaration of emergencies. Right. So in 1976, they said, we need to put some parameters and some checks and balances on the President of the United States right. for the declaration of emergencies. And right. that's why it was created in the first place. So there are stipulations on how it can be used and how it can be declared and right. you know what what type of situations can you draw money away from certain uh, military now when we say the military we obviously think um the defense you know either abroad or you know here the national guard about military right what about the army corps of engineers oh my goodness yeah okay so there's wow. a number of projects that the army corps of engineers which could be construed as military they're working on here in the united states where that money could be you know uh, right. drawn from now, right, which is the, the amount we're talking we about. Need it the amount we're talking gone. about is eight billion dollars. He now thinks he can pull in a 
with the combination of the $1.3 billion that's in the act that he's going to sign Wait, and how on. much did he get before? Because didn't he already get a big chunk given to him for well, it really has funding gone that he hasn't done anything with well, it? It's, it's been basically unused. I'm sure they're looking at that as far as the money as well as for his funding for his $8 billion or how much he thinks he needs. Right. Chris Hayes did a really good um, sort of a comprehensive look at the border, and he had different reporters all along the border in different places from Florida to Texas. And it was a really, I really recommend people to watch it because it really gave an inside view, talking to border patrol, talking to people who live there, um, you know, whose land is right there. So he's going to have to confiscate people's land in order to put the wall up and they don't want it. Um, most of people that, that they talked to didn't want it. Beto O'Rourke was in El Paso, right? Because right. he was having his little, um, you know... Counter-rally. Counter-rally, thank <laughs> you, yes. I didn't know what to call it. Um, but he was talking about, and even, even President Trump um, in the Rose Garden this morning made reference to the fact that, you know, there's other places that would benefit from the wall. Not, you know, not like El Paso, because you go there and say El Paso's the most dangerous city, blah, blah, blah. He tried to trump it up to be all this crazy stuff. And it turned out that he was just full of it, because none of it's true. And so he even made reference to the fact that, that he blew it, <laughs> that El Paso isn't really like that. But I was, um, he was talking in the, when, because I was trying to write down everything he was saying this morning. And he's like, he said, we will be sued in the Ninth Circuit, right. even though it shouldn't even be there. Right. <laughs> and possibly get a bad ruling. And then it'll be appealed, and then we'll get another bad ruling. Then we'll go to the Supreme Court, and we will hopefully get a fair shake. And we will win in the Supreme Court, right. just like the band did. Right. Well, I, I, I've always said that he really doesn't want to resolve the wall problem because... It's the easiest way for him to gin up his loyal supporters right. and get them agitated and get them to come out and support. And he just goes to that over and over again. Right. I mean, that's the easiest way for him to easily get, you know, people to come out and, and support. So why would I want to solve it then, really? So right. what better way not to solve it is to tie it up in the courts. Ah. And then at the same time, he can say, okay. well, you see, I'm trying to keep America safe. The Democrats are not. Um, and now it's in the courts, and I'm sure the Ninth Circuit, which is a liberal court, they're not going to right. agree with this. That's basically and, what and he was so, saying. Yeah. Yes, and so he's going to string this out, and hopefully, maybe in his mind, this gets him to 2020 election to use this over and over and over again right. as a campaign banner to say, See, I'm trying to keep America safe. Vote for me. I think he said something. Didn't I write it down somewhere? So, yeah, I've already done a lot of the wall for the election 2020. It's like he's claiming that I don't need to do this just because I'm... Is, was, and the only thing he said, though, was I've already done a lot of the wall for the election. Well, for the we, election? Wait, use, nobody asked him about it yet. If we use the word logic, which I'm kind of hesitant to to use because there is no logic. <laughs> Extra logic, um, right. If, if really most of the wall's been built, then therefore, where's the national emergency? Right, where's the emergency and why do you need so much more money if it's already been, you know, done? Right. Well, here's something else that he said in addition to, and I, I agree with you, um, that the, his, his proclamation about how it's going to go to the Ninth Circuit and then be appealed in the Ninth oh, Circuit. Oh, right, and just and like the band did, and that's the way the band did, too. It went to the Ninth cir Circuit, it got appealed, it got, you know, they didn't get a good ruling, finally so got to the question. Supreme Court. If, if it's going to be immediately challenged in court, does that mean he gets to pull the money until it's been declared? Um, I don't you know. know. I, 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 I would, would think, think he, not, but I would maybe. think he is going to pull the money, and he'll say, well, until... <laughs> Until it's declared illegal, I'm going to use the money. So we'll see how that turns out. And that would know. be his style. That would that would not surprise me one single bit. Yeah. So you know, as he stands up and he claims, I didn't need to do this, but I'd rather do it faster. That's the only reason he's doing it. So that. we're going to talk about um, <laughs> some recent comments from the governor of California and the attorney general of California when we yes. come back from this break. Okay. I'm Tim Apicella here with S Cynthia Lee Sinclair. This is Trump Week. We'll be right back. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. 
I'll bring you guests, I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. We're back. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicella, filling in for Jay Fidel, here with Cynthia Sinclair, and we're talking about the national emergency pertaining to the, the wall, the wall funding. So Donald Trump had his press conference in the Rose Garden, and if you watched it long enough, you're going, is he unhinged? I mean, he was talking about some very strange things. He was very right. combative, of course, again, with the reporters. Um, while all this is going on, we had a press conference in California. We had the governor of California and the attorney general um, basically talking about how this national emergency is going to impact their state the most. Oh my gosh, yes, because of all the fires and stuff, and they're going to lose all this emergency well, and, funding. Well, and that's a very good point about what they're already their 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 natural emergencies, right? Natural disasters that are national emergencies for all of the state of California. Right. And Governor Newsom did point out that there's 12 billion dollars reserved for disaster relief that has not been released at all. So he's comparing wow. this national emergency to the disaster relief to a real of, of, of $12 billion that has not been released at all. And it's not just for California, but, you know, it's other states. Texas and Florida and the places that have been hit so hard. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think he has a valid point in that? The governor. Oh, yes, he does. And I think that maybe Trump has been sitting on it. Well, we've got the um, the um, Homeland Security is who's in charge of that. And I don't trust Kirsten Nielsen as far as I could throw her, probably, because um, she's a little girl. I might be able to throw her pretty far, <laughs> but I don't think it would work. Because I think that she just toes the, you know, gets in line behind Trump, does whatever he wants, goes right along with whatever it is that he thinks is the way it should go. I don't think she stands up, and I don't think that we are very safe in regards to Homeland Security. She was also involved in all of the, you know, uh, separating kids from their parents before it was actually declared to happen. So I don't trust her at all. Well, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit because, um, you know, most of this show is dedicated to Trump. the propagation of the right. national emergency. But getting to your point you just made, um, remember we talked about distractions and, and right. stories that dis distract from real pertinent, um, right. important Absolutely. stories that the, the press does not have time to basically dive into. Right. Well, one of them is that there is an announcement from Department of um, Homeland Security was that the funding for the prevention of Russia meddling with our 2020 election right. has been slashed. What? Or it's going to be slashed. It's going to be slashed yeah. in half or even more. And so mm. you're thinking, okay, at a time where we know Russia has been trying to meddle with our election, and we we saw evidence of that in the midterms. Right. And so, we know it's true. They've already proved it. It's not like it's a so question. So when you have, you know, that particular office, and the, the formal office is Cybersecurity Infrastructure Agency. Right. Um, it was designed in 2016 to basically address prevention of Russia hacking and meddling into these elections. Right. Why would that funding be shelved or cut? When we need it more than ever now. Yeah. As we're going into another election cycle, we need it more than ever now. And would it be just to let them be able to do it, you know? Well, and let's back off so they have more space to do this hacking because he's denied that it happened all this time, believed Putin that he didn't do it. 
So all the way down the line, we can see that he doesn't believe that, well, or he knows that it's true and refuses to admit it, but he has said it didn't happen, it didn't happen, right. it didn't happen. And so, of course, he's telling all his people in his administration, you know, this is just a hoax. It's not true anyway. He did say that. He said that after the Helsinki, that uh, this is a hoax. It's a hoax, yeah. He didn't believe his, you know, intelligent agencies. Right. Then he said he did believe them. Then he said it didn't believe them. And he reversed himself four times after right. Helsinki. Right. And you know, so we're talking about national security, but what about the security and preservation of our democracy yeah. and voting and the right. and the integrity of our votes is is paramount to our democracy. Right. Why would you cut funding for something we know they're trying to do currently? Yeah. I don't understand that. I and, don't either. And so what? We, but we haven't heard that story, but it's out there, and we haven't had time to hear about it because. We have proclamations of national emergency. We have and distraction after distraction after distraction after distraction. Right. Like you said, the distractions On the distractions. are the distractions. Right. You know, and ever since you said that a few weeks ago, I've been thinking about it. And each time one of these things comes up, that's what I, I kind of wonder about that. I go, you know, is this just another distraction? And sure enough, it turns out that it looks like it is just yeah. another distraction. Right. So let's just turn back onto the road and talk a bit about... <laughs> What, what the Democrats and the Republicans have said about this national security. Well, I have a quote from uh, Pelosi and Schumer. or It's not a quote exactly, but it's their statement. Okay. It's part of their statement. It's really long, so I just sort of grabbed yeah, a little bit of it. Um, they did refer to this national, um, this claim of a national um, emergency. They called it a power grab, and they called it unlawful. Um, and they said that the Republican actions clearly, I'm sorry, the president's actions clearly violate the Congress's exclusive power of the purse, which our founders enshrined in the Constitution. The Congress will defend our constitutional authority in the Congress, in the courts, and in the public using every remedy available. And I thought, you go, guys, please, please defend I, our... It's a clear de declarative statement of what the issue is here. Right. And it's unlawful. It's, it's a power grab, and they it, are going to do the best grab. they can. So I, I to like to it. I like to not only look at what the Democrats say, but you know to know how many Republicans are having issues with it. Right. That's a big deal. And so uh, Senator Susan Collins from a Republican from Maine, she is uh, concerned, and she feels that um, the dollars of Congress already appropriated, and she said it strikes as undermining the appropriations process. And the will of the Congress. And um, I don't think she likes it. I don't think now, so Now, if either. you're a senator, if you're a House representative, and you see a power grab by the President of the United States, even if he's part of your party, um, it's still right. undermining the purpose, the constitutional purpose right. of the Congress. And it is. That, that's, why I like, that's why I took this part of that quote out of there. Because I thought that they really ad addresses that the whole appropriations thing and the power of the purse. I love that. The Congress's exclusive power of the purse. They are the only ones who are supposed to be able to approve or disprove um, any kind of funding for anything. Right? right? Right. Well, and I'm glad to hear, I'm glad to hear them have stated as they did. And I'm glad to hear Susan Collins. Uh, Marco Rubio has some issues with it. So in the next few days, um, let's see how many Republicans in the Senate or in the House, I'm sure there'll be some in the House as well, that actually stand up and speak out on it. Because right. I'm sure their constituents they represent in their home state oh, yeah. gotta have some questions about this. Oh yes, I'm sure they do. And, because and, they're wondering the same thing. I wonder, because we haven't heard anything about it, you know, that next step process of national emergencies to going to martial law, right. and that just terrifies Well, I, I think martial law is a, a, a big stretch to a national emergency. I think you could have states say, we're going to bring in the National Guard. That's what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not really martial law. It's just they've already brought in the National Guard. We have 5,000 troops down there, right? Yeah. Can I read that, 5,000? Yeah, 5,000 troops are on the border now. Yeah, and I think some states have retracted their National Guard from that duty. Mm -hmm. uh, the governors have said, I want you come back yeah because um, it's not real you don't need to be there well, they don't feel it's a national emergency because it's not and these aren't necessarily <laughs> democratic states that are saying i want my national guard back right you exactly because we might need them for something real 
That's and and General McCaffrey he, he addressed that when he was being interviewed about all how all of these troops that have been sent down there um, are missing out on all the training that they need to be having and it's important to be fully trained and ready in case there is a real emergency. Mm -hmm. They need to not be oh kind of you know, out of the loop because they've been down on the border eating tacos or whatever, you know, and I know that's not what they do. I don't mean to disrespect them, but they need to be primed and ready for a real emergency. Absolutely. And they're missing all of and that. If, and those real emergencies could be natural disasters. That's yes. where the National Guard comes in and really, right. it really helps out when there's national, you know, natural disasters. Right. And, you know, there's, a, you know, plenty of opportunities for that to occur. So if they're deployed at the border, they're not going to be utilized properly. So, right. I, yeah, I agree with those governors that have concerns. I do, too. So let's talk about the reaction, the reaction to the initial um, signing off on the bill before he announced there's a national disaster, excuse me, a, a national, national emergency. Right? emergency. Um, let's talk about the government within the government. And who is that government within the government? It's our conservative tacos. Right. Rush Limbaugh. Oh, gosh. You know, Sean he Hannity. Loves, he loves Rush Limbaugh. He talked all about how much he loves Rush Limbaugh. And who was else that he said that um, uh, he, Sean Hannity, yes, absolutely great supporter of what I do. But if I didn't do, if I didn't keep doing what I'm doing, then he wouldn't like me. So it's not me that he likes. He just likes what I do. And didn't, didn't President Trump in the Rose Garden this morning actually make reference to Rush Limbaugh? Yes, he did. Make reference to Sean Hannity? And Ann Coulter, too. Yeah, he doesn't like Ann Coulter. He says, He's, I don't know her. I don't really know her. I haven't talked to her in over a year. And then, <laughs> but I like her. I, but I like her, yeah. is what he says. But the, the point is, does he have to check in with them on every issue? Well, I don't know, but she and, said and he's an idiot. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> That's what she tweeted today. She tweeted that. <laughs> well, she said worse in the past, but, you know, that's Ann Coulter. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just saying is, who's running this government? Yeah, is it exactly. Is it the conservative talk show hosts, mm -hmm. or is it President Trump? Does mm -hmm. he have to check in and say, Mother, may I, uh, for everything he wants to do to make sure that the, the base that listens to their programs are going to be in sync? Right. Um, boy, that's a kind of a finger in the air testing yeah. where the winds are blowing, a right. bad approach to well, being a leader I and the president of the I think he kind of puts States. things out there to see how they're going to react and then goes forward with it. So I think you're right. He does kind of check in with them first. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that previous presidents have looked at polling data, right. a more scientific way of, <laughs> right. of getting, you know, where the nation is on a certain issue. Um, the bottom line is... Going to Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh isn't going to substitute, in my mind, the value right. of a scientific poll that's right. been conducted with a number of, um, you know, a number of survey sure. respondents. Right. The real deal. Yeah, the real well, deal. Instead, he just gave the polling information yeah. to his buddy, Roger Stone, right. who gave it to the Russians. Well, guess what? You know, so, hey. Guess what? <clears throat> We could talk about this for another 20 minutes. We're out of time. No way. That went so fast. Thank you, Cynthia. Nice Thank to see you, you again. Tim. I'm Thank Tim Abicella with Cynthia Sinclair. It's Trump Week. We'll see you next week. Aloha.